In this video, I want to talk about inverses for quadratic functions because these are kind of a special case. Now, we know already that inverses are symmetrical over the line y equals x, and we know that if f and f inverse are in fact inverses and a comma b is on the graph of f, then b comma a is on the graph of f inverse. So using what we know about those properties of inverses, let's draw the inverse of a quadratic function. I've got a function f of x equals left paren x plus 2 right paren raised to the second power plus one. I have a table of values for this graph. And as I read off this table of values, I'm gonna go ahead and graph the reverse of that set of points. So the first point I have is at negative four, five. So I'm going to graph something at five comma negative four. The next point is negative three, two. So I'm gonna graph something at two, negative three. The next point on f is negative two, one. So I'm gonna graph something at one, negative two. The next point of f is negative one, two. So I'm gonna graph two, negative one. The next point on f is zero, five. So I'm gonna graph something at five, zero. One comma 10 doesn't fit on my graph very well. So I'm gonna leave that one out. Now the resulting graph is the graph of a quadratic function, but it's on its side and opening up to the right. It does look like a nice inverse for the graph of f. In fact, we could add that y equals x line and take a look at it. Adding that dashed line, y equals x looks very nice. They are symmetrical over that line. But the problem we have is that this inverse that we've drawn, well, it looks good as an inverse. It's an inverse, but not an inverse function. And the key word there being function. It doesn't pass a vertical line test. We have x values with more than one y value, and that would fail on a vertical line test. So to find a true inverse function for f, we only can use either the top or the bottom of this inverse that we've drawn. If we use the top half of the inverse, then we're essentially using the range y is greater than or equal to negative 2. This means that we also need to restrict the domain of the original quadratic function f of x. And so we're going to restrict the domain to x is greater than or equal to negative 2. This means we have half of a quadratic function and a square root function as the result. I've actually drawn the square root function for you in the graph below. It is g of x equals the square root of, under that square root is x minus 1, outside of that square root is minus 2. We also have a set of points for this, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 3, negative 0 0.586, I'm rounding, 4, negative 0 0.268, again I'm rounding, and 5, comma 0. We can take these points and reverse them just to make sure we believe that this works. So 1, negative 2 becomes negative 2, 1. 2, negative 1 becomes negative 1, 2. 3, negative 0.586 becomes negative 0.586, comma 3. 4, negative 0.268 becomes negative 0.268, comma 4. And 5, comma 0 becomes 0, comma 5. If we connect those of the smooth curve, we can see that we are in fact getting the right half of the original parabola. And including the y equals x line, we do find that the graphs are symmetric over that line. Now, this quadratic graph doesn't work for an inverse in its native form because of a property we haven't talked about yet. And this is the property of being one-to-one. -one. One to one is exactly opposite of a function. So for a function, for every x, we need exactly one y. For a function to be one to one, for every y value, we need exactly one x value. And so in this case, this original function f fails at being one to one. To find the inverse of a function and have it actually be a function, it's important for the original to actually be both a function and one to one. In other words, it needs to pass both a vertical line test and a horizontal line test.